Wow, what an off season for Orange County Soccer Club. What was it? A returning head coach that was a fan favorite. A massive amount of key players returning. I think the most in team history. Oh, and almost 1,500 new owners with a club as part of the investment opportunity that the club opened up at the end of last season. We're excited about this. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Podcast of Champions. This is the Orange and Black Soccer Cast. How's it going, Orange County? Welcome to another episode of the Orange and Black Soccer Cast, the first and only podcast dedicated to Orange County Soccer Club, its fans, and supporters. I'm your host, Ray Samora, and I'm going to take you through our journey as we discuss all things Orange County Soccer Club, helping me out with this journey for this episode. First, we got Brad. Brad, how's it doing? Happy 2024. Happy 2024. What a long off season it has been, and yet we still got another three weeks to go. We do, and uh, it's exciting. I'm ready for this. I, I want the season to start right now, but it's not quite there yet. Also helping us tonight, or for this episode, we've got Mr. Larry. The The beard is is slowly coming back. It's nice and clean there, Larry. Welcome back. The, the, the beard is about 105 days old now. It's uh, It's getting where it needs to be. And dear God in heaven, thank you that we are back. Woohoo! Could not be more excited. This is going to be one hell of a year, boys. Were you were you were you missing talking to you know, Brad, myself, Dylan right. when he's available? Absolutely, of course I do. Um, you know, every now and then I shoot Andy a text just to see if he's actually doing anything that's making him money in life versus you know just OCSC stuff. And you know what? It's just it, it's it's good to be back. This has been a fantastic off season. I can't wait three weeks. Oh my God, that's like forever. Uh, one other person helping us out in this episode uh, for the full episode here, and that's one of our writers, uh, DK. Welcome back. We've been here before. We're excited to have you. Uh, how are you feeling so far and, and heading into this new season? Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I am incredibly excited as uh, it seems the vibe is around the podcast and the fans these days. I'm so excited that I can't even wait for the home opener. I will be driving up to Sacramento uh, for the game on the ninth. So that is how hyped I am for this new season. I believe you're part of the camping crew that's making their way up uh, to Sacramento. Yes, I right? am. Yes, I am. Awesome. Awesome. Well, for those that have been living under a rock or haven't been paying attention, preseason is in full swing right now. Orange County's already been playing matches in the preseason. Unfortunately, those matches have been behind closed doors or at least behind closed fences. I guess fans can sort of see some of this stuff here and there, but we wanted to talk about these matches. So we figured out, Hey, who better to bring us on or bring onto the show to help us? Cause he's been there. He's been watching what's been happening. And that's the, the, the man you see on media stuff for the club on Twitter, Facebook, whatever else he's posted, Instagram, Edison LaCour, Edison first time on the show, right? Hey, welcome. How you doing? Yeah, one of those uh, first time, long time situations, I believe, isn't it? Uh, very, very happy to be here on the show. Thank you for having me. Um, let's let's talk some OCSC. Let's talk some OCSC. So really, honestly, Edison, you're going to be the one that's going to be the star of this point of the show, because I believe many of us haven't really been able to see what's been happening with this team in the preseason. But give us your um, basic recaps of the matches so far. Or wait, Larry. Be, be, before Edison gets there, what is that you are sporting on your chest, my friend? Is that some new Hummel OCSC kit that we're seeing there? No, no kit, no kit. In, well, in well, fact, it is uh, it's a new a new staff uh, new staff quarter zips uh, that we we got. You're gonna see uh, all of us uh, in the in the front office be rocking some of the new. New Hummel and OCSC. Uh, this is, like I said, the quarter zips. You can see the chevrons are a bit lower down here uh, coming across the sleeves here. So, yeah, very, very excited for the um, for, for the new gear. And uh, I believe all of us are going to be very excited about that as well. Nice. So since Larry went there, instead of talking about the games really quick, I'm just going to ask you this, and I don't want to get you in trouble with your team, but... <laughs> 
How excited are you? Like, I'm sure you've seen some of the mock-ups, some of the designs, some of the things coming out from, from uh, Hummel. How excited are you? And what, what kind of grade are you going to give what you've seen so far? You don't have to tell us what you've seen. Just give us a, a grade and how excited you are about it. You know, I, I wish I could do that last part, but it's pretty lock and key. I, I haven't seen them yet myself. So, um, but I am very excited just based off of what um, Hummel has been doing around the league. Um, I believe that Hummel is going to be a great partner for us uh, moving into the future. Um, I, I love what they've done with the, uh, the training kits. I see uh, that DK has got one of them back there in the, in the background. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be a very, very good time, a very good uh, partnership for OCSC moving forward into the future. Perfect. Yeah. We're, I think the fans are all excited about this. I think they're excited with what the potential is with Hummel instead of what we had sort of the cookie cutter, uh, nothing against Adidas, but it was very Adidas, very, you know, what anyone I think could go probably buy online and customize themselves with a, a name, a number, a logo or something like that. So it's exciting to see what we're going to get on the kits. Hopefully we, we hear something about that very soon. Let's talk about the preseason. And I'm just going to start off right here uh, with, with a comment from you. If you had to grade the team's performances in the preseason so far, where would you sort of put them? Would you think they're exceeding what was expected preseason, maybe still trying to figure out the kinks, or are they? do they look like they're right on track in the preseason as we head to the final three weeks here? Um, you know, I'd say it's a bit of a combination of the last two that you said, um, where they're kind of finding their feet and um, but still also at the same time of finding their feet, kind of working out some of the kinks. Right. Um, you know, in talking with uh, head coach Morton Carlson, uh, he's been very pleased with how the fitness levels of the team has been coming along. Um, some of the starters are playing to are starting to begin to play uh, more minutes in the uh, first team here. Um, so, or in the, in the preseason games, um, most of them went more than 45 minutes, um, in this most recent outing. Um, and, you know, they are very pleased with how they're coming along, uh, and, and their fitness levels in the preseason, which is, you know, the, the plan and what is the, uh, what's the point of the preseason, right? It's to, to get your legs underneath you and hopefully to escape, uh, also without any injuries, uh, which has also been. Uh, a big, a big point of emphasis so far in, in this preseason is bringing guys back healthy, um, but also keeping them healthy and getting them ready for March 9th against Sacramento. All right, Edison. So I got a question for you. Uh, the team so far, you mentioned that we are returning most of our players, avoiding injuries. That's good. The only thing that we're missing so far in this preseason is that scoring thread and uh, goals going on the scoreboard. I believe that you know, it's a good thing to see the team not conceding goals, or at least the starting players. But who's the team think is going to be that next Milan Oloski moving into the 2024 season? You know, it's it's hard to replace a guy like Milan Oloski, you know, a, a former Golden Boot winner and, and all that kind of stuff now moving on to play with, with Norshalin. Um, I think one of the great things about this team is that they're not necessarily looking for one guy to replace his production. They brought in quite a few guys and retained one guy, you know, who, who is known for uh, being a bit of a goal scorer in uh, Tomas Among, uh, bringing him back, uh, had nine goals last season, uh, just almost hit that, that 10 goal mark. Um, but also bringing in a guy like Ethan Zubak, who at this level um, has shown what he can do uh, formerly of, of LA Galaxy 2. I'll be very happy that he's going to be wearing our colors now and hopefully uh, pouring in some of, some of those, uh, goal scoring numbers that he did with Los Dos uh, here for for OCSC and another uh, former LA Galaxy product in Cameron Dunbar. Uh, Cameron Dunbar, um, you know, we got to see glimpses of him last season, you know, uh, with his pace and, and his technical abilities, his footwork on the ball, uh, creating space for himself and for others. Um, but, you know, he's also a guy that I think they're looking to uh, kind of recreate or or fill in some of those holes uh, that's left behind by, you know, the, the club's all time record goal scorer, which is a, it's a hard thing to, to do. Um, but it's, I think it's good that they're not necessarily looking to, to one guy to, to fill that hole because it'd be a lot for one person to do, but you know, they, they've brought in multiple people who can kind of take on that burden. And uh, I think, I think those guys are ready for it. 
All right, so we know the general starting lineup, what it's going to look like. It's going to be very similar to last year. But we also brought in a lot of guys down the roster who are going to be fighting for those roster positions. Are there any ones that have really stood out to you so far in this preseason? Um, So one guy that stuck out uh, quite a bit to me so far in the preseason uh, has been one of the new players that we brought on, and that's uh, Sofian Jafal. Um, He's he's played uh, in the most recent two um, preseason matches and, um, he's, he's very technical on the ball. Uh, he, he plays in that midfield and he can, you know, uh, begin the press, but he can also, um, you know, create space for, like I said, for himself and also for others. He's a, uh, from what I've seen so far, he's a very creative player. And, um, I think he's going to fit into this system, uh, that Morton Carlson uses, uh, just fine. So Edison, um, Talk to us a little bit about um, – give us a little bit of game recap um, from from what you've seen. Um, what maybe in particular um, – <laughs> thanks, Ray. That's almost kind of what I was going to ask. But tell, <laughs> tell us what you've seen that is maybe a little bit different this year um, versus what we saw last year. Um, that's a good question. I, I wouldn't say that there's actually – to, I think the biggest thing that they brought in with this group, but not only with the group, but with the coaching staff was continuity. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're trying some new things here or there where they can. And again, I don't want to, you know, get too, too deep into it and, of course. you know, start revealing things that I, that I shouldn't be. Um, but I, I think you're going to find a lot of consistency and a lot of carryover. That was uh, the message so far um, in, in this preseason um, and, and just trying to, um you know, stay consistent. And now that looking at what Morton Carlson did with a short season last year, now he's got a full preseason to really even further um, kind of build upon his tactics the way that uh, they like to play, um, you know, which is going to be their uh, possession style team. They're very comfortable on the ball and and they'll, they'll wait for their moments to, to find their attacking moments. They're not really going to force anything and they'll, um, they'll stop an opponent's attack, not only by having that, that stellar defense, uh, like we mentioned when we re-signed Colin Shuttler and the back line with, you know, the captain, Marcus Nakeem, Dylan Powers, Ryan Dogman, Owen Lamb. Um, they were one of the best defensive units in the league last year. And um, I think the it's trending to be more the same, and at least it has been so far this preseason. Um, and they're just kind of looking for that that goal-scoring touch, which will come as, you know, time comes along. Uh, I think most recently this LAFC two game, uh, it, the scoreline really didn't show uh, just how much they dominated that game for. Um, they were just kind of missing that, that final, final touch in the final third. Um, but it, it easily could have been three, four, nothing going into halftime, not even, you know, at the end, of, at the end of the match. So, um, which is, you know, again, like we said, it's the preseason it's, you know, we're, we're looking uh, to kind of, refine some of some of those finer details and um i think come the ninth i i haven't seen anything that that would uh deter me from believing that this team could go on a run similarly to to last year's team awesome i got to, i got one more for you and it's kind of a couple of parts okay mm-hmm. um who leads the team in scoring this year how many goals do they score and how many points does ocsc put up in 2024? Man, that is, that, that is a good question. Um, <laughs> let's see. I believe 65 got us to second place last season. If I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, um, I would say let's, let's, let's shoot. You always want to improve, right? So let's go 68. I'm going to say the goal scoring leader is Tomas Among and he bags 13. I have written it down right here on this little OCSC pad. You can see it right there. All right. Hold me to it. And I hope they so, eclipse those, that point, Mark. I, I so come the, uh, come the middle of October, we will, uh, we will, we will have a discussion sidelines or maybe right back here on the podcast and we will see how good you are. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, how's it going, Edison? Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask, just because you're somebody who's down on the field, you get to talk to the players a lot, you get to talk to the coaches. Uh, one aspect that was always brought up last season was the chemistry of the squad and how basically everybody had said it was one of the best 
chemistries that we had seen in the club. Um, of course, now that we have so many returning players, I'm sure that chemistry is locked in. But how do you feel those new signings are fitting in with the role and the squad and that kind of culture that was already built from last season? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a that's a great question. And it's it's only continuing to to grow. Um, I, I'd say that the guys that they brought in, you know, uh, they brought in um Sofian Jafal they brought in Charlie Asensio Ethan Zubak like a lot of them have um excuse me a lot of them have uh prior connections uh with each other whether that was um playing with each other uh on prior teams or against each other um I know that uh Sofian and Charlie played against each other in the national championship game uh you know way back when so there's a lot of history between um guys on this team who weren't there last year um, that's kind of just made them gel, I believe, really, really quickly. The vibes have been very high around uh, around the locker room, uh, which makes for a very fun time going to work and, uh, you know, being around that kind of environment. It's been it's been really fun. Um, and I think it's only going to improve as as they get even more time together uh, throughout the season. Fantastic. Yeah, we can't wait to see how that all plays out on the pitch. Um, one last question that, you know, uh, with the off season, it seemed there was a big focus on a lot of the young players and moving them up to the, their professional contracts. So how do you feel, you know, Bryce Jameson, Joseph Buckley, Ashton Miles and Duran are doing in regards of uh, finding their own comfortability and confidence within this first team? Yeah, I think that's a, another great point, um, especially when we come to a guy like Ashton Miles, right? He's the first guy to come up through the OCSC two Academy and earn a first team contract um, first team full-time uh, professional contract. We've had a couple of guys, you know, be on those two way Academy and uh, professional first team deals. Um, but he's the first one to get a uh, full-time professional contract, which is a really big moment uh, for the club and obviously for Ashton as well. Um, and I think he slide he slotted in really, really well. Um, he played 90 minutes in that first uh, preseason game against LMU and I believe he's played at least 45 in every preseason game there after it. And, um, you know, he he looks like he's slotted right in. Um, he was kind of when Marcus didn't feature in that first game and he was playing out there at center back, they were really kind of looking at him to be a little bit more vocal and kind of take over to lead that back line from from the center back line. And um, he's he's all he slotted right in. And, you know, you wouldn't tell that it was he's been, you know, like I said, with the first team for the past two seasons or so kind of coming on an up and down, um, up and down role, but it's, you know, he, he's someone who carries himself like a professional um, and, and is someone who is be wise beyond his years, put it that way. Um, when it turn when it comes to being a, uh, being a professional. So I'd say um, Ashton and, and Bryce and, and Duran, both of whom played at the U 17 world cup, um, ben Barjolo, um, Nico Ruiz uh, saw some time against LAFC two, um, as did Tosh Eagleston. So that pathway, the the, the OCSC two, um, to the um, to the first team, you can definitely see it. And and guys are are getting their getting their minutes here in the preseason and trying to show uh, you know give Morton Carlson and the coaching staff some tough decisions uh, for for the regular season. So I have one more question based on the the youth that we just brought up. So I believe it was Ashton Miles is the first ever academy player to make the jump. Uh, I do not believe there have been any others so far who have signed a professional contract with Orange County or elsewhere. Who is the next one from that group to make the leap, in your opinion? And is there more than one who will be signing a contract by the end of the season? That's a great question. Um, I, I am not 100% sure, um, but if you had to ask my personal opinion, I would say um, it's another one of those longer tenured guys that have been in the OCSC2 program a bit now. Um, I'd say Nico Ruiz. Um, he's, a, he's a young forward who was on the uh, USL Academy League, uh, Academy League Finals first team for his performance when OCSC2 went down to Florida. Um, but I also would say that Taj Eagleston has, has a shout as well, um, to potentially guys that I could see go on 
signing uh, first team contracts. The both of whom uh, play their roles very well um, and have been uh, in in training this this preseason. Um, you know, with OCSC two and occasionally with uh, with the first team when when they bring guys up from the second team. Um, but I'd say that those two are definitely two to keep an eye on. All right. So I know that this next question needs no introduction. Our fellow co-host Dylan says it all the time, and I'm sure you <laughs> trained players, but you finally get to answer it yourself. What is your favorite vegetable and how do you prepare it? You know, my favorite vegetable, um, I'd have to say is probably a carrot. I, I love, love some carrots. Um, and preparing it, I don't really know if you could say that it's preparing it. Um, I, I just pull some baby carrots right out of the bag. Nice little side of ranch. That's that's as prepared, I guess, as it needs to be, if you ask me. So uh, yes. I'd, I'd, go, I'd go with some carrots and ranch. <laughs> Offset our healthy food with unhealthy ranch. I love exactly. That. You know, it's, it's, you got to disguise it a little bit, right? <laughs> the only way to eat any vegetable. Exactly. Exactly. That's the way to do it. Uh, Edison, if you open up your Spotify or whatever account you use to listen to music right now, what song's playing? Well, I just got back from the gym, uh, so I'd say probably like some Eminem. Uh, he's you know as he's as classic as it can get, and as far as uh, as far as the gym goes, I, I don't know if there's anybody that gets the blood pumping quite as quick as a uh, as a nice little Cinderella man from Eminem, you know. And and what uh, what kind of exercises were you doing this evening at the gym, Edison? Um, let's see. We did uh, some chest and tries today. A good friend of mine once told me that Monday is International Chest Day, so I was like, "All right, well, I can't let you down today." So that's that's what we did to the, this evening. Awesome. And, and do you have a maybe a local business or restaurant or something you want to give a shout out to, uh, so our fellow listeners uh, and co-hosts can maybe try it out if we haven't done so already? Absolutely. Yeah. Big big fan of this question. Um, I'd say a place you got to go check out um i just recently got a, a fresh trim from them um it is the den barber shop they they'll see you too larry they do beards and all that kind of stuff uh it's it's the den barber shop in dana point uh, a good friend of mine is a barber down there and and they run a great shop so if you're ever in the dana point they got a location in laguna beach as well um i would say that uh the den is a place that you should check out if you're in need of a haircut there we go. Larry, you got to go get that beard trim. You got to go get, get a beard trim right there, man. That's I get mine done there too, Larry. They, they do a I, good job. I promise. I, I, I got a guy. His <laughs> name is Wendy and I trust her. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, only, there's only a few people I'm going to let touch this bad boy. And, <laughs> and right now it's her and her alone. There you go. There you go. So, you need, you need those people. So Edison, I want to just give you a chance to, cause there may be people that are hearing you on our show, maybe they don't follow you or watch what's going on on the social medias. Uh, let, let the listeners know, like, what is it that you do for Orange County and how can they uh, hear more from you or, or watch more from you in the future? Yeah, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I am the uh, content and match day producer uh, at Orange County Soccer Club. Uh, so I, I help run our social media team alongside our, our very uh, good videographer and social media specialist, Irving Arvizu. Uh, he's one of the best in the business. And uh, we we do, um, you know, various content videos and we're going to kick the match previews back up again here soon uh, once the games, the regular season uh, begins again. And um, so we're going to get those going. And, you know, we just try and we're trying to elevate um, as much coverage as we possibly can uh, with um, with Irving. He, he allows us to do a lot of, of new things uh, that we couldn't previously do in, in the future. So he and I, we're going to do our very best this season to try and bring you alongside um, OCSC, not only on the field, but a little bit off the field um, and just try and help expose, um, you know, Orange County SC and its players uh, and, and humanize them a little bit, you know, like obviously we're all, we're all people too and see, you know, kind of a glimpse into their lives and, and training and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we're, we're really doing our best. That way you can catch all of that. Um, we are Orange County Soccer on Instagram, Orange County SC on Twitter. Um, and you can go ahead. I, I follow, I'm most active on Twitter uh, with uh, at Edison LaCour on Twitter. Yeah, and, and I apologize ahead of time for this upcoming season when 
Larry is photobombing most of your pictures, your videos, because he's sitting there <laughs> always trying to find a way to be on the screen when he's sitting on the sidelines there with his uh, his phone getting images for our Instagram uh, account as well. See there, we, we got to give added. that beard as much airtime as we possibly can. I could not awesome. agree more. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, you 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 bearded people stick together too well. Um, there's I, I wanted to you had to sit for without a beard, Ray. So, brother, come join us. I, um, I shaved. I shaved uh, last night because my wife does not like the way it feels. My beard comes out with really needly stubble. So my, my wife does not like the way that feels when I try to give her a kiss. So I had to shave it. Like that. You got to get past 10 days and you're good. Yeah, no, for me, no, I promise you, 10 days for me is not good. Trust me. You can ask my wife. Edison, <laughs> before this, this spirals down into a typical black hole here on the podcast, I want to <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us on this episode. Hey, we'll have you back on again in, in the near future. You can come chat with us more. We appreciate the insider insight that you are able to provide that we just act like we know. So thank you, Edison. <laughs> Guys, it was a pleasure. I, I appreciate you all for having me. And uh, have a good rest of the show. Uh, we're we're excited you, for the season. Have a good one, Edison. We're to see you at the champ. Uh, we're going to go straight on. We had one guest. Let's go on to another guest who's waiting in the green room. And this is a, a, a gentleman that's been on this podcast multiple times. I believe now, correct me if I'm wrong, everybody, the, the, the highest tenured player here on the team now, Mr. Seth Kasipli. Uh, first question I have for you, Seth. First, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, Thank you for having me. My first question is, I don't know if you've listened to episodes of last season, but you got a lot of flack for your music taste uh, from a lot of players. When we asked the question, who has the best and who has the worst taste in music, <laughs> your name came up for both of those. Sometimes it was the, the you know, political answer. Oh, he's good, but he's maybe not. I don't know. What, what, can you just explain what music are you playing that is creating this divide uh, in the locker room with the taste of music? Uh, probably just the music that I like, which, uh, isn't everyone's cup of tea, apparently, which, um, if you can't handle the heat, stay out of the kitchen, you know, sometimes, sometimes you miss the ox, but, um, uh, I just tell everybody, well, if you want it, then connect it. If you want to connect your phone, go ahead. But that means you can't watch videos on your phone. You know, the Bluetooth audio is going to come through the speaker. That's a fine. So I just, I put on a radio and I put it in my locker and I go about my business and, if that, I take requests all the time, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, some guys don't like some of the classic rock stuff. A lot of guys aren't super into country, but, um, but I like, I like mixing it up. I don't know. Sometimes hearing the same kind of like hip hoppy stuff. I don't know. Like sometimes I'll play jazz that kind of doesn't go over very well, but, uh, but it's a good start to the morning. You know, you just, you don't know what you're going to find. So you're busting out like the achy breaky heart first thing in the morning and the <laughs> no, like, oh, no, yeah. no, like like today, today, um, I'll give, uh, I'll give Sofiane a shout out. He wanted some Frank Sinatra. So we played, uh, started with Fly Me to the Moon radio. Um, and, and it, it always shifts. We listened to Dua Lipa, Ariana Grande. Who else did we get in there? I'm trying to think if that's another, but yeah, so I, I, I just like to, I like to, um, to mix it up because, because, um, I don't know. You just want to start the morning off good, get some good energy. Well, here's here's the thing, right? If if you don't take the initiative and go out there and play the music, I mean, you, Seth's gonna do it. So players, I mean, if you want to get get the music going, you got to get there super early, beat Seth to the punch, play some music. If not, don't complain. He beat you to it. He got the music going. But but I appreciate you guys. You guys got you guys gave people the courage to speak up because now so I've got some help from Cameron Dunbar who uh, who I rate as a DJ. He's for sure playing some really good ones. So um so we kind of switch it off. But uh but I don't mind the flack. Hey, if I if somebody hears something they like they never heard before, then I don't know. Well, and, and that's the amazing thing, right? You build this great chemistry with the team in the locker room. You could see it on the pitch and. You guys can sort of be open and honest with the, the music. You can joke about it a little bit and have fun. And I think every time we asked that question last season, everyone would crack up at it. I think some people were anticipating it. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you, Seth, for the all the people in the locker room, other than you, who has the best taste in music? Who has the worst? Oh, um, Marcus Nakim has a very, very good uh, taste in music. He's got a very eclectic taste. Um, he knows uh, a lot of older music, which I think is, is, uh, I respect him for that. And then he's also, he knows a lot of the new music. So I like it a lot. The worst scent, the worst taste in music, the worst taste in music. That's a tough one. Cause, um, 
Uh, that's yeah, that's tough. I honestly, I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but I don't know. Like well, a lot of the young guys. So I mean, I'm I'm pretty old now, and so so sharing a locker room with 18 year old kids and hearing uh, the jargon and and sometimes listening to some of the stuff they got on their headphones. I, I have no idea what's going on. So I I would say kind of a mix of them. Jay Buck, um, <laughs> Ben and uh, Ben Bargiolo and and Bryce Jameson. Like who else would I really not know? Mostly those guys, which I like teasing them about. Ashton Miles, yeah, it was, it's pretty fun. So I, I got to ask you this question because you sort of brought it up. When did you realize, you know, now as a soccer player, you're old. You're you're an older soccer player now. When did that come to your mind? Oh, it's you guys aren't gonna like it, but like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's young just, man's game, right? It's a young it, man's game. Yeah, I just kind of looked in the mirror one day and and I and I just randomly thought like, oh, okay. Uh, there's some guys coming in that just, you know, maybe haven't gone to college or or I gra- I graduated from college 4 years ago when I'm talking about school days. It's um it comes at you fast. Oh, I think uh I I think uh, I I was saying who will go next, but I think it's Larry. Larry, I'm going to pass it on to you. Uh, first of all, Seth, um Ray did not introduce you properly. So I am going to Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Orange County Soccer Club legend, freaking <laughs> legend, Seth Kasipley. Let's Thank get that you. right next time, Ray. Know who you're talking to. Um, <laughs> you are a senior member of the team. And granted, I was two years out of college when you were born, so I got you by a couple. You ain't old yet, brother. Not even close. But you are a senior member of the team. And there's another senior member of the team who is no longer with the team, who, if I understand correctly, for all of your years as a professional, there's only two seasons where you haven't played on the team with him, and that's Brent Richards. Can you talk to us a little bit about your time with Brent, your relationship with Brent? What's it like not having Brent there this year after so many years of being together? Uh, Brent Richards is one of my best friends. He is a phenomenal human being, compassionate, uh, respectful, disciplined, hilarious. Um, yes, I was very fortunate to spend uh, a large proportion of my career with him. Uh, he taught me a lot of things. We struggled through a lot of things together. We succeeded together. Uh, just a, a special relationship to to have with someone. And um, so on the, on the topic of Brent Richards, he is, uh, is an, he's an inspiration for me. And even though he's not here physically, uh, he's with me every morning. Nice, nice. Uh, I have one other one for you, and I want to take you back to the Western Conference Finals against who the hell were we playing? San Antonio. San Antonio? Mm. San Antonio. Um, Ugo Okoli scores that goal. Everybody starts going nuts. Everybody's running in, and all of a sudden, I don't know if you even remember doing it, but you came sliding right through the camera. Do you remember this? I do. do. Somebody created a gif of it. And I'm wondering if you can go back to that moment and if you can recall what is going through your head at that moment, because it's got to be one of the longest slides in the history of soccer. It was magnificent. Can you just maybe talk us through just a little bit on that? We, I do remember this. Uh, we, I, I got a lot of videos from my family also say of like the, the TV and then just me kind of just, you know, sliding across it. It was, I enjoyed it. I was happy that it went, came off so well. Sometimes they, they don't go that well, but, um, but we were fortunate that it was kind of sprinkling. I mean, just later in the year. So the, the dew um, picks up for sure in the second half, once the sun sets. And um, I, I had actually hurt my foot earlier that year. So I was out for a large portion of that year, but was fortunate to get fit for the playoffs and was getting some minutes towards the end. So um, just, just a rush of emotions and, uh, and that's something that you dream of. You see it every day on TV, I think. So, I, I mean, I can tell you a couple of notable ones, but one that comes to mind is DDA Drogba in the Champions League final. He he did one after scoring a header against Bayern. That was just so good. And then Fernando Torres also has one when he played for Chelsea too. Like, you just, you, like, when you know you can slide for a little while, you just kind of <laughs> run into it. And it's just like the slip and slide in the backyard. You um, You lay down and... That was fun. Yeah, it was a good one. I even I was like, "Oh, I'm kind of sliding for a while." <laughs> well, we don't go too far. It, it well, it, it was beautiful, and there's nothing. I, I think I can speak for the entirety of the Orange County Soccer Club fan base. If we could see that again, 
sometime late in the year from you, it would just make the entire season entirely worthwhile. So we'll see you on the pitch, Seth. Yes, yes, thank you. I hope I can do it too. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Great to see you again, Seth. Um, sure. Question that I have for you is, uh, you know, obviously, undoubtedly, the squad had an amazing second half of the season last year. You know, probably the best in the league. We were just on a run, and it was fantastic to see and to watch. How confident are you that you guys can keep that momentum from the end of last season into 2024? Uh, very confident, really confident. I think the, a lot of this is one of the first times I've had a significant amount of returning players in the locker room, which is really cool. Uh, it's nice to see a lot of continuity already. Um, it's offering different challenges and also pretty, uh, pretty gratifying to to not have a lot of a lot of new faces. But um, but yeah, I mean, and, and, like. When you ask me the question, honestly, my first thought is new year. Kind of want to be want to want to move forward. Don't want to be looking backwards too much. It was it was a wonderful accomplishment, and we fell short of you know a couple of our goals, obviously. And so it's by no means a failure. But um, but the the group so far, I'm really optimistic about. I I think we added good pieces. I think we have good guys coming back. Uh, just a matter of uh, like I said, keeping the head down, looking ahead staying present and um and i think that will be good that's great to hear uh and just one last question you know obviously you had mentioned we have a ton of returning players um probably you know one of the best slots of returning players that we've had uh throughout the years that i've been watching at least uh but how important for you as a player and the rest of the squad was it that you got to see carlson return for a multi-year contract uh very important for me I, I've really liked working with him. Um, he's uh, he's teaching me a lot, which is cool. I'm just learning more about me as a player, learning more about soccer in general, tactically. I mean, and then also managing. He he has handled a lot of situations really well, I believe. Um, I have a good relationship with him. So, um, so yeah, him coming back definitely made it more appealing to stay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the reins. Hello again, Seth. This Hello. is, I believe, your 12th professional season by my count. But I think what's really interesting is last year was your most minutes played with Orange County in one season ever and your most since, I believe, 2019 in Reno. You mm -hmm. mentioned your injury history. What kind of changed over the last year, year and a half, to where you're playing more minutes than you were any other season with Orange County? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I, I, I guess, uh, I've, I've been fortunate, I, I, I guess like to, to have a pretty good idea about what my body likes, what my body doesn't. Um, it's definitely a big goal of mine every off season to physically improve somewhere that I'm, I'm not the most imposing person on the field, but, uh, so any advantage I can get, uh, the off season is usually a good time to do it without so much load on the body. Um, but uh, but the especially that year you mentioned in Reno and last year, I have found that I definitely succeed most in teams where uh, my role is really just more of a supporter. I you know I, I'd like to to make actions in games that are more impactful, but for the most part, um, I do a really good job of of maintaining structure within a group and kind of just moving the ball from A to B. So. Um, I think that I found myself in a good role last year and, um, and I'm hoping to be of use as much this year, obviously, but, uh, again, that's Carlson's decision. So, um, I just try and show up and get to work and, uh, in a couple of years it has worked out and I've played pretty well. So that's good. All right. My next question for you is you've been around long, a long time, obviously, as we've mentioned, <laughs> I guess one of the things that recent news aside uh is the increasing level of competition in the usl how has it really changed from when you first started back in your days i believe with uh, the timbers two to today um how has the level of difficulty or i guess play increased in the usl over those years good question um something that we talk about a lot actually the guys that have been around for a while and have seen what the league was like six or seven years ago 
compared to now, especially with, um, I mean, a good example is like the Norwegian guys that we got, uh, Marcus and Ryan. They, uh, I don't, I don't think that you'd be getting guys of that quality six or seven years ago, uh, or it would be a lot more difficult to convince them that coming here would be a positive decision for their careers. Whereas tactically the games have gotten um, more clever, I'd call them. Like, so it's teams are realizing that being disciplined, um, what can get you results, being organized, you know, being a group, teams are becoming a lot better at that. Clubs are also spending more money, both in salaries and in um, facilities. So teams are having strength coaches, teams are having gyms, teams are using a lot more resources to to put out better products. Um, yeah, to, like, I mean, there's a little bit of background, but I suppose like so the the another reason why the why I believe that the league has steadily gotten better is so like we recently unionized, and so now that there's just kind of more of a solid foundation for. Uh, for standards across the league, you're finding that maybe some of the teams that given a choice wouldn't meet those standards are now meeting them. And that, so those that's creating more environments where better players are able to shine a little more. Um, it just pushes the league a lot. It accelerates the league's evolution a little bit quicker, I believe, uh, you know, from a player's perspective. I'm sure clubs may not want to hear that. But um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's gotten exceedingly better physically, tactically, um, I mean, even fans, I think, I, I think it's more exciting. I think the games are more exciting to come watch. I think that the quality is better. Players are faster. They're more dynamic. It makes for, makes for more entertaining soccer. So, um, so I think that the, oh, like all of them together to answer your question is, uh, is the soccer has certainly gotten better. The soccer has improved. And so the entertainment factor has improved and people want to come play in front of people. All right, I got one more, and I'll hopefully avoid the age uh, question here. But <laughs> you've played in a lot of different stadiums, and now that we're doing a lot of uh, moving to the East Coast now with cross-conference play, what's your favorite stadium you've visited so far over your career? Oh. Um, favorite stadium that I visited? Favorite stadium... So without thinking about it, I immediately think Sacramento, uh, just because it, like that's where I I love to go play, and they can pack it out. You know, I've, I've played in front of nine, ten thousand people there, and it's it's a lot of fun. Um, the 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 Louisville Stadium is very nice. Their stadium, um, I mean, it's obviously new, but and so that that really feels like uh, what I would say is like a European soccer environment when I walk into it. Um, played the the Rio Grande Valley um RIP to uh that that stadium is really cool that's you know it's soccer specific most of the, honestly like most of them are going to be soccer specific um just you know getting fans all the way around the stadium and not having to deal with a baseball field or a track or something that's it's um it's really nice I guess I should probably get some flack for not saying the <laughs> Great Park Championship Stadium but um but that, I mean, that one's nice too. It is. I, we feel very comfortable there. I will say uh, Championship Soccer Stadium, although it's probably not the most grand in th this amazing stadium, it's beautiful for its intimacy and for what it creates for the fans in our area. Uh, my biggest selling point when I talk about that stadium is any seat you get there is a great seat. You're going to, mm -hmm. you're going to see and hear all the action at any seat in that stadium. And you can't say that about most sports in the area, which is pretty cool. So yeah. uh, I, I, I won't hurt you for, for not mentioning that on all the other ones. Cause there's a lot of beautiful stadiums when it comes to soccer that you've played in. Uh, I have a question for you and, and I'm going to try and avoid the political aspect of this question or, or anything like that. But there's been a lot of news recently about the open cup MLS and all that, you know, cluster mess going on with that i want to ask you personally what are your thoughts on the open cup uh as a player as as seth casipoli what are your thoughts on that is is it something that you enjoy playing in is it something that you're motivated to play in how does that all play out in seth casipoli's world yeah i i was just talking to dunbar about that because uh our both of our twitter feeds are full of the uh the mumbo jumbo that is uh speculation on you know all the whys right everybody wants to know why uh because because we don't know what is happening um 
But for Seth Kasipli, the the Open Cup is exciting. I think the Open Cup is exciting. I love playing in it. I am uh, I'm prideful of it. You know, I like the early rounds. Uh, you know, we play against other local teams that you could you could argue compete for um, for like what is that? I mean, you know, kind of supremacy in the region. And so so I I enjoy. I want to get out there and I want to beat them. Right. I, w- I want to I want to have uh, proof to say, like, no, I play for Orange County Soccer Club. I play in the USL. Right. Like I, I play a high level of soccer. So that's that's uh, it, it gets me excited for that. And then um, and then you take it as it comes. And with the opportunity to play against MLS clubs last year, we played against Portland um, in in Portland. Um, what's that? I can't remember. Why can I remember what that stadium is called? But um, Providence. yeah, Providence Park. Like, so getting to play there is, is amazing getting, you know, it's, um, it provides a lot of opportunities and there's so much randomness, uh, like tournaments, tournaments can be, can be all the highs and the lows. I just think that it's really where you're going to get, um, a lot of the, 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 like the soccer energy, that worldwide soccer energy is where the open cup is for me. So I, I love it. I want it. I want to play in it. Yeah, and if you don't have the Open Cup, you don't get that amazing celebration with Bryce and Corey Day last year where they're leapfrogging over each other. I believe it was against Campo FC. Uh, you don't get the experience where I think there was uh, over 100 Orange County fans traveling to what was then Bank of America Stadium uh, mm-hmm. to face LAFC, which yeah. is a, a neat experience. I, I know there's maybe people in the MLS side that don't enjoy having to potentially travel to the Great Park, but, I mean, it's it's the beauty of it. And, and I appreciate your your honesty with that answer. Uh, there, Seth. Um, let me ask you one one question about Orange County Soccer Club here. Uh, out of all the incoming players that are not part of that core that returned, who has been surprising you from what you've seen from them in the training sessions? Uh, is there one or two players that are really standing out in your in your vision of man? These these guys are going to help us this year. I mean, honestly, all of them, all of like, and I I would hesitate to use the word surprise. I guess if that would be you know politically correct, but um. You, you don't know what you're going to get. And, uh, and I am, uh, I'm aware that maybe coming into a group like ours, which is pretty close. I think we're a good team. Um, and also returning so many guys, I can understand why it might be a little intimidating coming into a locker room like that. So, uh, I was, uh, I'm happy to see that guys, I, I hope I don't forget anybody. Yeah. Zubac, Sorto, uh, Charlie Asensio. <sighs> Is there any, like, uh, oh, like I, Sofiane, like the, just to see them step in and have personality and express themselves and, um, and, you know, and want to make it an impact or want to compete is, is a good thing for all of us. I think that it's only going to make us better. And I think that they, they saw that it's a, maybe it's a healthy place to come in and try and earn a spot. So, um, really all of them have been, have been awesome. I think that they've, they've put their head down. They wanted to work. They've gotten right in. Um, and, We'll see what happens. Awesome. Um, one last question for you. For the fans making their way out to the stadium this season, what should they expect out of Orange County Soccer Club, the players, out of Seth? What what should they be excited to come to the Championship Soccer Stadium for in 2024? I would be happy if after a game, win or lose, a fan said, you know what, this is my first time here and um, and I had a blast. And it just looks like you guys just never gave up. And so I, th- I think that that would be so, like, I think that if, you know, if we do that, if we stay in until the very end of every single game, uh, you know, I think that we're going to pull ourselves out of holes. I think that we're going to put in a lot of goals against teams. If we, you know, if we continue to push towards the end and, and keep that level. Yeah. Uh, so I think that, I think that's what guys, what people should be excited to come and watch is a team that you are going to get 90 minutes of people wanting to run and new guys coming onto the field, wanting to run, wanting to score, wanting to work. Um, I think that that's what they're going to get. Awesome. I, I'm going to just ask my fellow co host any other last questions before we let Seth uh, enjoy the rest of his evening? Going once, going twice. I'm ha- I don't I'm happy to answer Karen Kay's question. I'm just just to help her out. <laughs> really... There we go. Hey, Seth, <laughs> yeah, go here's for the it. thing. Sometimes <laughs> we will take um, uh, fan questions and we will ask those fan questions. And I was actually gonna put in our little private chat. Hey, do we want to ask this question? And then there was that other comment about 
the dude's had 12 questions about his age. Let's, so I decided to back off of it. But you know what? Please go for it. Answer. <laughs> um, to recover, uh, not so much. Sleep. Sleep, <laughs> sleep and hydration for recovery. Uh, you know, you're going to get hit by a wall regardless. Uh, but more importantly, preparation. So uh, especially if we are, if you're flying, it's hydration, like at least 24 hours before the flight. Uh, and then, you know, move in around, like, I like to get into a pool, uh, when we fly, just, uh, just to kind of get the body going high, the altitude, like the, the, um, what is it like the, the air, the concentration of air doesn't do things good for the body. And it takes a lot of time for your body to get used to that. Um, so before, uh, what is it? Magnesium, like a, like a, like a, I guess there's different kinds of magnesium. I learned that this year. That's kind of crazy, but so there's, and then, so it's, it's magnesium, it's hydration. And then it is, yeah, if we're playing on Saturday, then by Thursday night, trying to put like a good amount of food in you, whether it's whatever you're comfortable with. Like I don't necessarily eat a ton of carbs, but like, I'll, I'll just have like a big meal and then kind of like taper down from there. Cause I don't like to play super heavy and I feel like I'm really full, but um, but yeah, definitely the prep is what I'm mostly focused on. And then the recovery, uh, you know, when you're away, when you're on away trips and you got a flight early on in the morning, sometimes you want to go out and have a couple. So get ready for that next week. <laughs> All right. Then, awesome. then let, let, let's go to that question. Then, um, you know, after the game, if you're talking about having a couple, what is your go-to couple? Go-to couple. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be funny uh i i don't i like budweiser um call i call it bud heavy because it's not bud light and then uh but and a dark and stormy that's kind of been um for about a couple of years now that's been my go-to all right i'm an old guy i don't know what the hell a dark and stormy is so. uh, rum <laughs> and uh ginger beer oh interesting all interesting. right i might have to try that i like rum i don't know quite like ginger beer but hey i might have to try that on the the advice of seth i'll try something like that there it's a go. good one i can curse seth they're good they're good and they're i don't know it's just kind of it's one of those things that like you don't really think about it you know you don't have one for a while then you hear somebody order it and you're like actually that sounds <laughs> is it just good. you just use like a cheap rum you don't use a really crazy expensive rum it's just a cheap that, rum. no just dark rum okay cool good to know good to know uh seth i appreciate uh, you taking some time with us this evening uh, for this episode and speaking to us and we're super excited. I, I I'm going to speak for all orange County soccer club fans. I think we're all excited for this upcoming season. Uh, it sounds like you are, and it sounds like the players are excited for this upcoming season season as well. Uh, it, we're, we're looking forward to some amazing things and hopefully we're going to see some great things from Seth, from the team and maybe potential uh, lifting of some sort of trophy in by the end of 2024. Right. We should uh, hope so. Awesome. Once again, thank you as always, Seth, for joining us on this uh, podcast and we appreciate it, and we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. See you guys out there. Thank you. Awesome. It, 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 it's all, I mean, there's really no games to talk about at this point. So it's just fun to have someone like a Seth Kasipli on. It, it, you just feel like you're having a conversation with a pal. Uh, he's so open. I, I know there was, uh, I'm going to just call you guys out. This is not to be mean, but there was like chatter in the background. Do we ask about the open cup or should we, or should we not? And I'm like, you know what? Seth's a great guy. I'm just going to ask it in a way. I'm not going to ask him to take a side. I just want to find out, does Seth like the open cup and what are his thoughts on what it means and stuff like that? So I thought that was really good uh, discussion to get there. My, right. my thinking wow. on it was, is, you know, let, let's be careful that we don't do something that might get him into some kind of hot water if he says the right thing, the wrong thing, et cetera. So sometimes, sometimes even I can try to be politically correct. <laughs> here's, here's the thing, right? If we were having, if we had Bryce Jameson on that and we're talking to him, I'm definitely not going into that question with him. Seth is someone that has experienced talking to the media. You could tell he, he, he's composed. He knows how to answer. And I figured Seth would, would be able to answer it appropriately and, and give some honesty on it as well. So that's the reason I decided it's okay to ask Seth that question. Um, I, I took that lead and said, let's just ask it. Um, let's do this really quick. Uh, before we wrap anything out, I'm going to ask you all each a question. We're actually going to do two rounds of questions. Then we'll do our random thoughts. We'll be done with this. Uh, I want to get a quick take from each of you on your thoughts. Like what's exciting you about this upcoming season? And I'm going to start with you, Brad. What, what is exciting you about 2024 for Orange County or just for the USL in general? 
Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to answer two part. Uh, for Orange County, I know this is kind of the obvious uh, tip of the tongue answer. 10 out of 11 starters are returning to this team. This team was finishing second in the regular season last year off, I believe it was 58 points. I know Edison said something different earlier, but this team definitely finished on a high. You can tell just from Edison, you can tell from Seth, they're still confident that they're still the same team as last year and can only build on that for this year. For the USL as a whole, you know, I thought I would never say this, but I'm excited to see what Las Vegas is bringing with their new ownership and Jose Batista. Uh, Brent Lashbrook is finally out. The signings that they have rapidly made over the last couple weeks, <clears throat> this team is going to be a lot more competitive, and away days to Vegas are going to be a lot more difficult for most teams. And definitely going to look forward to just not only Vegas being better, but just the parity in the league. There's a lot of movement of good players but a lot of newer good players coming to the usl as a destination and you're gonna find in the next couple of years the best usl teams if the open cup stays a thing are going to consistently start beating the worst of the worst in the mls that gap has narrowed greatly larry what's exciting you entering this season uh, i'll echo brad about you know all of these returning players we uh, i mean I've been coming to games since 2018. I've been a season ticket holder since the start of 2019. There are more starting, there are more returning players on this team, maybe than in all the years combined, it feels like. So seeing all these guys back and seeing what a good, good soccer team this turned into, um, you know, after that first two and a half month stretch, um, I am really looking forward to seeing this an entire season under um, Coach Morton. Uh, I am looking forward to um, uh, I'm looking forward to the post Milan as much as I love the guy and watching him score goals, but I'm looking forward to the post Milan era um, to see how Orange County fills that hole. It's a huge hole. 39, what, 43, go however many goals it was in two years. That's a big number in, in this uh, level of soccer. So I'm looking forward to seeing how, uh, how the team um, moves forward from that. And man, I'm just looking forward to being back on the sidelines game after game and hoping that I can maybe, you know, make a little bit better content that's a little bit more entertaining. I'm I'm working and I'm still learning. So I'm just I'm just looking forward to getting back out to the games. DK, what's exciting you the most entering the season? Yeah, I mean I think as soon as last season ended, a uh, ton of us talked about how the one thing that we wanted and hoped the most for in this offseason was Morton Carlson coming back. So him back on the reins I think has me had me hyped immediately about what we could see from the 2024 season. Um, and another thing is, you know, last year's uh, stadium deal that we got, I think that's going to change the environment in the stadium. I think not just this year, but the next few years, we're going to see this club, this fan base, this culture that we've seen grow over the past 10 years, grow faster than we ever have. And I'm really excited for what that entails and to be a part of it. Yeah. My, my uh, excitement is coming from uh, more sellouts. I I'm anticipating a ton of sellouts this season. I think that is part of, you know, what's happened with the uh, stadium deal with social medias, with the growth of this team and the success this team has had. I think that's going to be amazing. Um, next really quick. I want to ask you, and I'm stealing this. Uh, for those that don't know, I listen to Sports Talk Radio quite a bit. I'm stealing this next little segment. This might stick. It might not. Depends how it goes. I'm going to ask you all this. What did you learn on this episode? I'm going to start with you, Brad. What did you learn? I'll, I'll go first just so you can hear what I'm going to say. What I learned today is that Seth does not go to Olive Garden for all-you-can-eat pasta before he uh, plays matches because he doesn't like to load up on those carbs. He just eats a hearty meal, but it's not the pasta from Olive Garden all-you-can-eat. Uh, Brad, what did you learn on this episode? Oh boy, I wish I knew this question at the beginning so I'd listen a little harder. <laughs> just kidding. No, um, you know, just I'm really excited uh, just hearing Edison talk about the pipeline of the future and the players, uh, Barholo, uh, Ruiz, uh, all of them just looking forward to who signs next and eventually, you know, who signs away next to a different team in the league or in the world. Awesome. What did you learn this episode, Larry? Hey, I learned about a new drink. 
uh, a highball cocktail made with dark rum and ginger beer served over ice and garnished with a slice of lemon. But I can't remember the damn name of it because I'm old and I forget shit. Stop. Dark and stormy. Dark and oh, stormy. You, had, <laughs> you forget stuff, Larry. You forget stuff. Um, <laughs> where, where's uh, producer Andy? You got to get the bleep on there before it hits the, the streams. Uh, DK, what did you learn this <sighs> <episode>? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to have to piggyback off of Brad a little bit in regards of what Edison answered, that it really seems like these young players um, that are coming up from the two team uh, signing professional contracts are really stepping up and holding their own um, with, you know, all the starters that we had last season. And I think that's fantastic um, in relation to that, that apparently all the young guys, according to Seth, have the worst taste in music, which I feel like from a lot of us probably isn't too surprising. So <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Random thought time, quick random thoughts. I'm going to go reverse order DK. Actually, I won't go reverse order. I'm going to save Larry for last because I think he wants to go last. Right. Um, so we'll go to DK first. Yeah. Um, I mean, random kind of not random, but uh, for everybody listening, the CLC County Line Coalition will be having their last off-season meetup this Saturday at the Harp right. Inn in Costa Mesa at six o'clock. Uh, we would love to get as many people out there. Let's get even more hyped about this season that's coming. And uh, not only that, but the Harp Inn is where we watch away games. So come by, check out the area, and let's make a great culture this season. Brad, random thought. All right, so I got a new co-host the day after our last episode. Uh, in between now and then, this is the woman that Larry cuts uh, his beard. This is Wendy. No joke. Uh, <laughs> this is Wendy the dog. She's wearing a Hurricanes jersey to match me, and she's just the sweetest little angel. Perfect. Yeah, I, I got two two dogs as well, Lily and Roxy. They're not with me, though, right now, so I can't show them off. Uh, random thought for me is now I'm a fan of two Zubox when it comes to sports, one plays for Orange County Soccer Club, and the other plays for the LA Clippers. Ivica Zubac, Iva, Ivica Zubac. That's how you say it. Ivica Zubac. Um, so it's it's interesting. I, I never thought I would cheer for two Zubac. Uh, Larry, your random thought. Um, bear with me for just a minute, guys. Okay. Um, on New Year's Day, I was sitting in my recliner and I was stretching. Had my arms above my head. Had my hand over here on my chest, kind of helping out with stretch, and I felt a lump in my right breast now not typically a big deal because only one in 800 men get breast cancer however in my family my grandmother my great aunt my mother both of my sisters two of my 40 plus year old uh cousins all have breast cancer as it happened the next day i had just happened to have a doctor's appointment for something else and i had the doctor take a look he immediately said let's get a biopsy let's get a mammogram or let's get a mammogram let's get an ultrasound Nothing came back on the mammogram and the ultrasound. Everything looked blank. I insisted on them doing a biopsy because after talking with my oldest sister, nothing was ever found in any of the people in my family via mammogram and ultrasound. It was always found in a biopsy. So roughly a week and a half ago, I had a biopsy. Thank goodness that everything came back negative and I am perfectly healthy. So hallelujah for that. My random thought is not random at all. My random thought is be aware be conscious of your bodies. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. Be aware of any changes that might be occurring because I never thought about stuff like this in my life. And now all of a sudden, being in my mid-50s, I have to think about it more. And having this scare come up you know, five or six weeks ago, it made me very conscious. So I just want to tell everybody else out there, be conscious, be aware, check for things. If you see something that doesn't look right, a skin discoloration, whatever it happens to be, be aware. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Larry. And yes, I agree. Be aware of your body and any changes and get them looked at if necessary. Uh, I want to say we're looking forward to an awesome 2024. Thank you to all of our listeners that have listened live or that are listening in the future on podcast form. I want to thank all of my co-hosts for the evening, uh, Brad, mm -hmm. DK, Larry, our guest, Edison, and Seth. They were awesome. Um, also want to just give a shout out to our co-host that wasn't here tonight, Dylan. He was hoping to make it here. Apparently he was feeling a little under the weather, uh, so he couldn't make it on. Uh, but he did want to share that he's pretty stoked about uh, this season. He's excited about it as well. So we're looking forward to hear from him. Hopefully next week he'll be back. With that said, go Orange County. This is the Orange and Black Soccer Cast. 
and we're out.